So how is it now? You are able to see the screen, etc. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So this is our uh, name of this is industry and pharmacy one theory. Now, uh, as the name suggests, this subject will be dealing with you know uh, uh, industrial pharmacy. So whatever happens inside the industry. So it is a branch of pharmaceutics. Industrial pharmacy is a branch of pharmaceutics. Pharmaceutics is a branch of pharmacy. So industrial branch pharmacy is a branch of pharmaceutics, which deals with you know whatever are the things that are happening in an industry. Also, what happens in an industry? In an industry, manufacturing takes place. In an industry, quality control takes place. In an industry, a small amount of research and development takes place. We call it as a formulation and development. Okay. So all this formulation and development, uh, the manufacturing aspects, the equipments, different different equipments, and a part of IPQs, that is quality control, in process quality control and quality control, we are going to study in this, uh, what that, uh, in this subject. Okay. So let us go deep into uh, what this subject talks about. This course is going to. What is the scope of this course? The course is able to enable so it is going to make the students understand. So, what you are going to understand, and you are going to appreciate two things. Okay, you are going to appreciate the pharmaceutical additives. So, what are additives? What are pharmaceutical additives? So, these are the additives and the thing but XCPS. So you are going to understand the importance of XCPS in a pharmaceutical dosage form. Now, up till now, uh, uh, we always, you know, uh, felt that you know uh, XCPS are nothing but these are something which are not very useful compounds that are present inside a formulation. But in fact, in order to formulation work very properly, okay. What plays a very important role is an XCPS and additive. That's why they are called as additive. So, calling them as XCPS and also they are called as pharmaceutical aid. So, a uh, XCPN, what is the importance of it? What are the different types of XCPN? How they play an important role in formulation that all you are going to understand in an industrial pharmacy. Okay. Now, what are the objectives of uh, these industrial pharmacy as a subject? The first objective is to know various pharmaceutical dosage forms. So, what are the various pharmaceutical dosage forms that we are going to study? We are going to study tablets, we are going to study capsules, we are going to study liquids, we are going to study parenterals, parenterals, we are going to study ophthalmic dosage forms, okay, and we are going to study semi-solid dosage forms. Before this, you know, 12 years, whatever I have got in industrial pharmacy, there were only two dosage forms that were covered. Okay. Earlier, there were semi solids also, but in the last in pattern that SPTO was having, there was only tablet and capsule as a dosage form that was covered and it was covered in a great length. Okay. Earlier, we had semi solids, we had uh, suppose it is in uh, 2013 to 2008 pattern, we were having those dosage forms also. But over a period of time, they were removed. And luckily for you, you know, uh, semi solids, parenterals, parenterals was there in uh, the final year. But semi solids was taught in uh, the next semester. Okay. So, all these, so, so large amount of portion is being, uh, uh, what do you call that, cons uh, concise in this you know, semester. So, a lot of things you have to study in this semester. So, number of six to seven dosage forms you are going to study. We are going to study their manufacturing techniques. So, how we are going to manufacturing techniques? We are going to study their uh, XCPS, as I talked about earlier over here. That is about the pharmaceutical XCPS. So, we are going to study about the XCPS. Right? Then, what else we are going to do? We are going to know various consideration in development of a dosage form. It is not like, uh, you know, uh, a dosage form, you just take things you mix them together and you compress them it is not or you take things you mix them together you add a liquid and you get a solution it is nothing like that you know there are there are many other aspects that go inside of development of the dosage form uh, there is a separate department in uh, in industry which is known as formulation and development okay f and d which comes under research so a lot of lot of research have to go when you have to develop a dosage form that all we are going to study we are going to formulate okay we are going to study 
the uh, we are going to study the formulation that we talked about earlier and we are also going to study about the evaluation so how a dosage form is being evaluated after preparation for example tablet how a tablet is going to be evaluated how a capsule is going to be evaluated how a semi solid dosage form can be evaluated that evaluation also we are going to study in industrial pharmacy so these are the so this is the these are the various objectives that, that is first you are going to study various dosage form you are going to study manufacturing techniques you are going to study research that is development technique of it and you are also going to study about the evaluation of it okay so these are the various things that you are going to study inside the industrial pharmacy with a special emphasis as i told you about the pharmaceutical additives so pharmaceutical additives are the most important things that you are going to study in this whole year okay this is something about the subject that you are going to cover uh, in this next 45 to 60 lectures okay let us let us move ahead yeah let us come to the first topic that you are going to start as i told you uh, in my uh, what was that uh, whatsapp message that we are going to directly start with the first chapter the first topic is, is pre formulation studies okay if i am not wrong are you, are you just correct me you had some amount of pre formulation earlier are you you have studied little bit of pre formulation oh yes so little, little bit you have studied yeah yes, you you had a chapter of pre formulation right yeah partition coefficient we have studied only partition coefficient or something else also you have studied okay no problem so you no. know a little bit about pre formulation yes but definitely you know little bit only of pre formulation that's why it is again included in uh, the earlier also if it is again included in third year then you also have to understand that the importance how much is the importance of pre formulation so we are going to have near about seven lectures of pre formulation in the seven lectures what are what are what are the things that you are going to study you are going to study the introduction part of it you are going to study the goals and objectives you are going to study the challenges and you are going to study the physical chemical parameters that there are two parameters that is the physical parameters you are going to study there are the three physical parameters that you are going to study you are going to study the physical form that is crystal and manner of amorphous you are going to study the particle size and uh, shape flow properties you are going to study the solubility profile the pka ph partition coefficient and polymorphism polymorphism concept along with the physical properties you are going to study some chemical properties that is you are going to study about the hydrolysis oxidation reduction racemization polymerization you are going to study about the bcs classification okay of the drugs and its significance and you are also going to study about the application of the pre formulation in development of various dosage form so this is what your your syllabus is going to be all about okay for the pre formulation study for the next seven weeks okay let us let us study your what you are going to study today today you are going to study about the uh, formulation uh, you are going to study about the introduction part to the pre formulation you are going to study the goals and objectives you are going to study the the physical form you are going to start with the physical form in which you are going to study about the crystallization crystal and amorphous form of the substances if in permits you are going to study about the polymorphism and you are also going to study about the particle size and shape so these are the things that we are going to study today let us start with the introduction okay uh, are is the speed okay what do you feel or am i going a bit faster no sir it's okay that's fine okay uh, yes, good, good are yeah so let us start with the uh, definition of uh, pre formulation okay now pre formulation is defined as the phase of research and development so it is a part of research and development so it is nothing that you carry out every day okay are you getting me so it is a part of it's a phase of research and development not after every so once once the research has been done you don't have once the research about the drug has been done you don't have to do pre formulation and again and again okay which characterizes physical and chemical properties of a drug molecule so what we are going to study 
pre formulas in the thing but studying the in in short if you want to write it in one line pre formulas is nothing but studying the physical and the chemical properties of a drug molecule that is nothing but pre formulation now why do we do it there should be some reason for it so the reason in order because we want to develop a formulation which is going to be these three keywords are very important we want a formulation which is safe very important we want a formulation which is effective and we want a formulation which is stable okay these three keywords you have to remember right so we want a formulation which is first which is going to be stable which is going to be safe and which is going to be effective okay so these three are the conditions of a dosage form and in order to have this condition satisfied we have to do some research and development and what research and development we are going to do we are going to study the physical and we are going to study the chemical properties of that drug okay so once again for the uh, regarding the definition so uh, so what is uh, so what is pre formulation pre form sorry Preformulation is a phase of research and development which characterize, characterize, or you can you can put a simple word to it that is to study the physical and chemical properties of a drug molecule. Why? In order to develop safe, effective, and a stable dosage form. You want the want it to be safe. You want it to be effective. अगर हमने वो drug लिया तो it should show its effect. If you take a paracetamol, so it should relieve the temperature. It should bring down the temperature. If I take ibuprofen, then it should relieve me from the pain. Okay, and it should be stable over a period of time, right? Because we are going to manufacture the drug today, and the patient is going to consume it after say one or two years. So it should be, it should be stable. Okay. Now, so what is uh, so when does pre-formulation start? Pre-formulation starts immediately after the immediately after the pre-clinical. Or clinical studies, it starts after that, and it is done before the formulation. So it is done something before the formulation, and it is done after the preclinical and clinical trials. What are the preclinical and clinical trials? You must be hearing every day that Corona, or the vaccine, hai. okay, or Corona vaccine is in the preclinical trial stage, in the clinical trial stage. Okay, so after clinical trial and uh, preclinical trial, the drug, okay. Has to be formulated into a dosage form. So before formulating into dosage form, you need to do the pre-formulation study. So it comes before the formulation, and it is come. It comes after the pre-clinical trials. Okay, got it. Let us move to the objectives. Okay, what are the objectives of the uh, uh, pre uh, sorry pre-formulation studies? As I told. Uh, initially, in the first first step, the first and the main and the most important objective. If you forget all the objectives, it will do. But you have to do not forget this most important objective, that is to develop safe, effective, and stable dosage form. That is the main objective for a pre-formulation study. Okay, I do pre-formulation study so that I can develop a safe, effective, and a stable dosage form. There are other Uh, uh, objectives also, okay. We can say complementary objectives, not so important, but definitely we should know that. Okay. The second objective is to establish the physico-chemical parameters of the new drug entity. It means what? You have to develop a complete knowledge of the drug molecule. So I should have a complete knowledge about that drug molecule because I am going to formulate it now. If I am going to formulate it, I should have the knowledge of the drug. Otherwise, I am not able to go into the formulate. So, how, so how can I have the I, how can I have the complete knowledge if I have the physical knowledge of the drug molecule and if I have the chemical knowledge of the drug molecule? Then definitely I can have the total knowledge of the substance. Okay, of the drug. The third important thing is in order to determine the compatibility of the API. Okay, this API. Uh, by, by the way, what is API? Arohi, can you tell me API? So, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Fantastic, fantastic, Arohi. 
Okay. So API is nothing but active pharmaceutical ingredient. Okay. So it is something which is going to be very active. But this active comes with some excipients, it comes, comes, comes with some additives. If this API and if this additive that we are adding, if they are not compatible with each other, then what is going to happen? The API is going to get distorted. The chemical form is going to get distorted. The physical form is going to get distorted. Okay. And the API will not be able to show its action. So what is going to happen? It is going to become ineffective. So the effectivity, effectivity will be lost. So whatever excipients we are going to take. So there are many common excipients that are available. We have to see that these API are compatible with the common excipients. And how do you come to know this? You come to know this with the pre-formulation steps in order to determine the dosage form. Now, some people say that, you know, in this also there is a, some people say that you have to do the pre-formulation study and then you have to decide about the dosage form. Whereas, you know, some literature says that you have to decide upon the dosage form first and according to that you have to uh, do the uh, pre-formulation studies. But in order to develop a dosage form, definitely the pre-formulation study is very, very important. Okay. In order to choose the correct form of the drug. So there are there is a crystalline form, there is amorphous form, there are different different forms, forms of polymorph, there are polymorphic forms that are present of a drugs, right? Then there are uh, uh, there are different different uh, you know solvates, hydrates, salts that are present. Which, which are along with that drug substance. So you have to choose the correct form of the drug substance. Then the next, next thing that you have to do is you have to determine the storage of the formulation. So what is going to be the storage of the formulation? Whether I have to store it in the cold, whether I have to store it into uh, the away from light, okay? Whether I have to store it in a refrigerator, how I have to store that formulation? That idea also I get from the pre-formulation steps. Okay, then in order to develop the method to determine the quality of the formulation, we have to develop the quality, we have to determine the quality of the formulation. I require some analytical methods. Those analytical methods are also developed during the pre-formulation studies. And the most important, another important, the first and the last one, very important, that is in order to improve the bioavailability of the drug. I don't say that the others are not important, others are also equally important. Okay. In order to input the biology. What is biology? Are what is biology? Sir, uh, it is the amount of drug which can which is available to our uh, body drug. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Sir, fantastic. Uh -huh. How much drug is going inside the body, inside the systemic circulation? System. Yes. Or or more precise to the target organ. Okay. But basically, yes, yes. biology, biology decides how much goes inside the system. So, how much drug is going inside the system in the biology? We want to improve the biology of the drug. That is also possible only because of pre formulation. So, what are the objectives? Let us let us go with the objectives once again. Okay, that is first is to develop safe, effective, and stable dosage form. To have the complete knowledge of the drug molecule to check whether the drug molecule is compatible with the excipient in order to decide the dosage form, to choose the correct form of the drug substance, to determine the storage of the formulation, how, how the formulation should be stored, to develop method, okay, to determine the quality of the formulation in order to improve the bioavailability. So these are the various objectives of the pre-formulation studies and that's the pre-formulation studies. So we started with, you know, we started with the definition. We, uh, we saw when the pre-formulation studies should be and we went up further to see what are the objectives of the pre-formulation studies. So this all covers the introductory part of your pre-formulation studies. So now, uh, Ari, one more thing that you have to do is you have to tell me uh, when I have to stop, okay? So that is the other problem that I have with me is I, I don't I am not able to uh, see the time etc. So you have to just tell me uh, five minutes before that uh, the time is up. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Let us okay. move further. Let us move further for the challenges. 
what are the challenges that uh, occur when you are doing a pre form business? There are two major important challenges that take place. One, the amount of API that you get because it is an initial phase of you know, synthesis. So the molecule has been synthesized just now, isn't it? So the API that is available is very small. In that small amount of API, you have to carry out this pre formulation step. The second challenge that uh, a pre formulator, uh, the person who does a pre formulator formulation study faces is that the API is not in its purest form, okay, because it is just now synthesized. So, uh, there may be a possibility that the purest form is yet to come of that API. So, whatever whatever is the purity of the drug, that API, so not so pure API, has to be used, okay. And also, as I said, the uh, of API that is available is very less. What is going to happen? We have seen what are the importance or what are the objectives of pre formulation study. Okay, opposite to that, what is going to happen if the pre formulation studies are not carried out or if the pre formulation studies that are carried out are very poor in nature, but the good pre formulation studies are not carried out, then what are going to happen? Okay, the first thing that is going to happen is you are going to develop an unstable. They are going to stable and ineffective, and you are going to de develop an unsafe dosage for Okay. There will be a loss of developmental time. And you know uh, how much is the time important uh, with this COVID situation, you can understand how each and every day is important in the development of a drug, isn't it? Every day, so many people are dying. So, how much one one day is important in order to develop a drug? So if something goes wrong, if you, if you develop, you don't do pre-formulation studies and you develop a drug which is, you develop a formulation which is ineffective, then whatever time you have taken for development, all is going to go in waste. Again, you have to start from step one. And again, again, pre poor pre-formulation studies, again, you are going to land up with the wrong formulation. Okay. So poor pre-formulation studies are going to uh, lead to loss of a uh, development time. There will be financial losses. You are going to formulate, you are going to do batch scaling, you are going to uh, send that batches into market, and again, you have to pull back those batches. So, it is going to lead to a lot of financial losses. A lot of financial losses, and again and again, you have to do the same. You have to repeat with the studies, you have to repeat with the biology studies, you have to repeat with the bioequivalent studies, you have to uh, uh, repeat with the IV, IVC kind of studies. IV, IVC is nothing but in vivo, in vitro correlation studies. So these studies you have to again and again and again repeat. Okay. So hence it is good to do a good pre-formulation studies in the beginning only, so that with all the challenges that you have, with the good objectives that you have, that you have, it's very important to go with the good pre-formulation studies. Okay. So I said that pre-formulation studies we are we are going to study the drug. Uh, in its two aspects of the drugs we are going to study. We are going to study the physical properties of the drug and we are going to study the chemical properties of the drug. Right? So, when we are studying the physical properties, okay, let us uh, study today the physical form of the drug, the first aspect of physical properties, that is the physical form of the drug. The drug exists in two forms. It exists in amorphous form and it exists in crystalline form. Okay? Now, is it necessary for me to know uh, the form of the drug? Yes, it is very, very necessary for me to know the form of the drug. Okay, why we are going to study it further? Let us see further the difference between the amorphous form and a crystalline form. So, what is the amorphous form? A amorphous form of a drug is one in which the molecules are arranged randomly, all the atoms are arranged randomly, okay, in, uh, in the Molecular lattice. So you have a molecular lattice. In that molecular lattice, okay, you have the molecules which are arranged very, very randomly. Just to give you an example, I will show you. This is the figures. You can see a figure over here of SiO2 in a crystalline form. So this is the crystalline form of SiO2, right? Where the arrangement is very nice, and you can see this amorphous form. Where the arrangement is not in a proper fashion. So the molecules are not arranged in a proper fashion. Okay. This is a diamond. Okay. You can see over here. Okay. This is a diamond. This diamond you can see is arranged a very nice form. Right. Molecular arrangement is very good. 
you can see the diamond over here, which is going to be there in an MR first one. Okay, the amount of molecule is not good. So this is about the MR MR first one. Just to just to give you an example, I will show that. Okay. So MR first one have random arrangement of molecules or atoms. Molecules are randomly arranged. Okay, in an MR first one. How are they obtained? How are they prepared? They can prepare by different different techniques like precipitation, by rapid cooling. Okay, then they can be uh, prepared by lyophilization. Okay, so these are the different different techniques that are used for preparation of an amorphous form. Or these are the, if you use these techniques, then the product that is that you get is an amorphous form of a substance. One more important factor of an amorphous form is it does not have a very high, it does not have a definite melting point. Whereas if you say crystalline form, it has a very sharp melting point. Amorphous form do not have that good melting point. Amorphous form has some advantages and disadvantages. Okay. The first advantage that uh, amorphous form has is it's having a very high thermodynamic energy. Okay. It is having a very th uh, high thermodynamic energy well, because these substances, amorphous form, the particle size is very, very small. As the particle size is very small, hence it has, has a very high surface area. So the surface area, as the particle size is going to decrease, the surface area is going to increase. As you have studied a lot okay, in the last two years. So as the surface area increases, okay, the all, uh, the the, uh, the substances they become more hygroscopic in nature and as they are more hygroscopic in nature okay that's why what is happening is they become more reactive and as they are more reactive as the surface area is also high that's also they are more reactive okay and as they are having they are more reactive that's why they have more energy in them vice versa as they have more energy they become more reactive okay as they have less particle size, therefore they have more energy, that's why they become more reactive also. So this, this, this is the thing that happens with the amorphous substance. Moreover, as they have less particle size, hence their solubility is also very, very high. The thermodynamic energy is very high, their reactivity is very high, and hence their solubility is also going to be high. As their solubility is high, it is having a very high dissolution rate. Okay. So it dissolves very faster. What is the difference between dissolution and solubility? Arui, can you tell me? Little bit difficult question. Can you tell me? What is, what is the difference between solubility and dissolution? Are they same or is they are different than how they are different? So I don't know. Okay, no problem. Good. There is something that you don't know, so that I will be able to tell you. Okay. So when you study solubility with respect to time, with respect to some parameter, I'm giving you a very simple example. I'm not giving the definition. Okay. So dissolution is solubility with respect to time. Okay. With respect to amount or with respect to parameters, when you have with respect to pH maybe. So when you have, when you say dissolution, you talk about solubility of the substance in given time. Solubility of the substance at different different pH. Okay. Solubility of the substance at temperature. So when you when you when you say solubility of substance with respect to something, there is nothing but dissolution. Are you understanding it? Okay. Next is uh, there is a the difference between solubility and dissolution. But definitely, if the solubility is high, the dissolution is going to be high. As the dissolution is high, as the solubility is high, that's why it's going to have good biology. Arui, can you tell me, or anybody else who can tell me, just open your mic and tell me that what is bioavailability or uh, what are the factors, not bioavailability, she told me that, what are the factors that are responsible for biology? What are the two factors, important factors that are responsible for bioavailability? Arui or anybody else who can tell me? Anybody who can open their mic and tell me? Sir, one could be first pass meta first pass metabolism. Uh, this is Harshal, yeah, Harshal Mundu, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So first you said is first pass metabolism, and second, yes, 
and second so maybe good absorption good absorption okay anybody else particle size dosage form uh, what particle size particle size dosage form okay yeah anybody else ah huh? concentration of drug concentration of drug okay bioeffect is depending upon two factors two important factors one particle yeah one is uh, permeation one is solubility and second is permeation okay that permeation you study in you know uh, uh, what you said that partition coefficient yeah they have to. okay how the drug is partitioning itself etc okay do you remember that okay so permeation through the lipid molecule how it enters to the lipid molecule the gastric layer आप स्टमक का जो लेयर है उसमें से वो एंटर करके आउ इट एंटर्स इनसाइड द ब्लड सर्कुलेशन दैट इज नथिंग विद द परमिएशन सो सॉलिबिलिटी एंड परमिएशन दीज आर द टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स ओके फॉर बायोलॉजी ऑफ द ड्रग ओके वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इट फर्दर इन डिटेल राइट सो इट इज हैविंग गुड हायर इट इज हैविंग हायर सॉलिबिलिटी सो इट इज हैविंग हायर डिसोल्यूशन एंड एज इट इज हैविंग हायर सॉलिबिलिटी एंड हायर डिसोल्यूशन इट इज हैविंग अ वेरी गुड बायोलॉजी okay and more importantly it is not having a non variable clinical response so clinical response is non variable okay all said and done still amorphous form is not so very much used stable form the reason for this that why uh, it is not used very uh, heavily in uh, the Uh, you know, in drug for formulation, is because it is having some disadvantage. One of the disadvantage and very important disadvantage that it is having, it is having, it is having, it is very less stable as compared to the crystalline. Okay, so many times upon storage, this amorphous form, anything that is less stable is going to convert into the stable. You know it very well. Okay, after the last two years, you must have studied. Okay. So this labels, uh, so this less stable form of amorphous converts into the crystalline form, which is the more stable. Okay. If you take the example of uh, uh, no no biosine, okay, no biosine in amorphous form is well absorbed. Okay. When formulation of, when, uh, but when we are formulating it as suspension, it can be converted into the stable crystalline. And the absorption is poor. So no biosine is good in absorption in its amorphous form. The problem is you can't prepare a suspension out of it because if you prepare a suspension, it converts into st stable crystalline form, and this stable crystalline form is not absorbed properly. Okay. There are few substances which are used in amorphous form. Okay, but why still no biosine is used in amorphous form? It is still used in amorphous form. We make some changes and we use it. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sir, yeah, Kalpesh is saying that he cannot see the PPT clearly. Others can see. What about the others? Uh, sir, wait. So I think only clearly. Clearly, yes, can see. see. Yeah, if others can see, then Kalpesh kindly change your uh, either phone you have to buy new or you have to change your laptop. Okay, what do you want? I can't help. Okay. Kalpesh, Kalpesh, can you hear me? Kalpesh, okay, fine. Okay. So, uh, so there are very few drugs that are, as I said, that it is less stable. So there are very few drugs that are used in the amorphous form. To name a few, you know, uh, itraconazole uh, is one of those drugs which is used in amorphous form. Selecoxib uh, is another drug which is used in amorphous form. You can say. Uh, Cefepoxime, Cefepoxime, uh, Proxetel. Okay, there is another drug that is used in amorphous form, Novobiosine. Uh, the example which I which I studied. Okay, that is the drug which is used in amorphous form. So there are very few drugs that are used in amorphous form. Otherwise, most of the drugs are used in crystalline form. Okay. Let us take another example. Uh, let us take about uh, Novobiosine only, which is used in amorphous form. Okay. Now, when it is administered in a, a crystalline form, okay, it does not show any therapeutic activity. Okay, no biosine. Whereas, 
if it is given in amorphous form it is not only absorbed better from uh, the gastrointestinal tract but it also show very significant therapeutic benefits so that is the importance what i want to tell you is the importance of a substance how it should be taken so no biosin never can be given in a crystalline form if you take etraconazole etraconazole it cannot be given in any time in a uh, uh, crystalline form selicopsis cannot be given in a crystalline form it has to be given in amorphous form only okay unless and until but but still whatever the case may be they are uh, except this few drugs okay which i have mentioned okay and few uh, maybe 5 6 or 10 6 10 15 20 more drugs are given in amorphous form other substances are mostly given in the crystalline form usually as a rule amorphous form is usually avoided unless solubility makes a significant effect on the bioavailability of the drug as in the case of no biosin which i have mentioned earlier where solubility makes an effect on the therapeutic response except for this most of the drugs are given in crystalline form only okay now after amorphous form we are going to study about the crystalline form now okay now uh, uh, something comes in between crystalline form and amorphous form also uh, not that much useful okay but there is one form which is known as liquid crystalline form or liquid crystal form now if you see uh, amorphous form amorphous form has no long range or you can you can say it has no range okay if you take crystalline form it has having a long range and if you take a liquid crystalline form which is which is available in both of, in in uh, in between these it is having a short range okay or it is having a long range with two dimensional or one dimensional structure right so what do you understand by this long range order short range order now long range order or short range order talks about the orderliness when we say that a substance is having a long range it means it is having a good orderliness between two molecules which are at a long distance from each other so you have this molecule over here you have this molecule over here and you have this molecule over here these two molecules are in though they are far away from each other okay these are too far away from each other but there is a particular order in which they are existing with each other whereas if you take a short ring uh, if you take in case of amorphous form you take this molecule and you take this molecule okay the the uh, the order in between them okay this order the distance in between them is going to going to keep on varying it is not going to be constant for example i take this molecule and uh, so so if i take this this molecule over here and this molecule over here okay that distance is going to vary now it is something now it is now it is some x after some time it is going to become y after some time it is going to become z right this is in case of amorphous if you uh, but but in case of amo in case of uh, uh, what do you call that uh, liquid crystal form the liquid crystal form in short range if you take this two short range they are in order but when you take in case of long range they are not in order i hope i am able to tell you the difference between the amorphous form the liquid crystal form and the crystalline form in short i will tell you uh, liquid crystal form is something in between the amorphous form and it is it is in between the crystalline form okay where in short range they are in order whereas in long range they are not in order so that is that is what is about the liquid crystal form Liquid crystal form, you are not. I just told you from the academic point of view, liquid crystal form, you are not going to study. That's why I have not included in the syllabus also, okay, in my in my slides also, because there are no drugs are as such are available in liquid crystal form. No drug in liquid crystal form is used in pharmacy, okay? Yeah. 
coming back to now the crystalline form. Crystalline form is characterized by the regular spacing between the molecular lattice. It is having a definite crystal. It is having a definite three-dimensional structure. Okay, so we are having a three-dimensional structure. Okay, in a crystalline lattice. So this is the three-dimensional structure in a crystal lattice, right? So this is the three-dimensional structure which you are having in a crystal lattice. Diamond is the best example of. You are in order to understand about the crystalline structure. So, we have a three dimensional structure and the regular spacing within the molecular lattice. Okay. Now, uh, going further, what is the importance? Of, so, these are the these are some of the figures you can understand. So, this is the amorphous form of SiO2, which I showed you earlier. This is the, sorry, this is the crystalline form. This is the amorphous form. This is the crystalline form of diamond. This is the amorphous form of diamond to make you understand okay, how the difference is there. Okay. Now, uh, what is the importance of this crystalline form? Why should we study the crystalline form? Because this crystalline form of drug affects many properties. What does it affect? It affects the solubility, it affects the stability, and it also affects the dissolution. When you say dissolution means what? It affects the, sorry, when you say dissolution means what? It means it affects the viability and it also affects the stability property of the drug. So these all things are affected by the crystalline form. 